So the reaction has been stopped. I turned off the heat and the stirring already. I used the lab jack to lower the oil bath away from the reaction. I could lower it a little bit more if I would like. I've allowed it to cool and I need to wipe the oil off of the thermometer and the vial. So I've squirted a little bit of hexane onto this paper towel here. So my thermometer no longer has oil on it. I can set it aside. And now I'm gonna wipe off the vial. It might be a little difficult to remove the vial from the condenser. Just give it a little twist. So we wanna make sure we don't get oil all over the place. So do a good job wiping it off. Okay, so there's my reaction mixture. I'm gonna set the paper towel aside. So the next thing to do is we need to get this stir, the spin main out of here, but we don't wanna lose any product that might be on it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get a milliliter or so, which is approximately one squirt with these pipettes. And we're going to retrieve the stir bar with the forceps Hold it over top of the reaction and rinse it off with a milliliter of ether. That way we don't throw away any product that was stuck to our spin bank. I can set that aside to be washed later. At this point, we should definitely have two layers because our original reaction solvent was water. And now we've added the ether to it. The ether has a lower density than water, so it should be the top layer. So now that we have two layers, we're going to cap the vial and we're going to vortex it to ensure that there is as much interaction between the two layers as possible. The point of this is to use the ether to draw our product, which is organic, out of the water. So we're gonna vent it and give it a second to settle. And we should again have two layers that have been thoroughly mixed. And hopefully now our product is mostly in the top ether layer. We're going to use a pasture pipette, which I have right here, to transfer the lower, heavier aqueous layer into a small conical vial. So it's kind of clever here that we have a 5 mil conical vial and a 3 mil conical vial, and later we're going to put some things in this Erlenmeyer flask. So I'm going to move the lower layer. So I'm going to put my pipette all the way to the bottom and try to only suck up the water layer. It takes a bit of dexterity. If you suck up a bit of the ether, it's not really a big deal because when you are putting it into the vial, you just keep it, keep the ether part, and you can see I've got a couple drops, maybe you can't see, I don't know. But I've got a couple drops of ether in the top of my pipette. So I'm gonna let only the water out and put the ether back into my five mil pump vial. So that was, that was extraction with ether I have water layer here 
ether layer here. It's very important not to mix them up or to throw anything away before you've isolated your product. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add about 400 microliters of 5% sodium hydroxide to This is our water layer. We're setting that aside. It's out of here. This is my ether layer here. And if you're never sure, you can add a couple of drops of ether or water and see what happens. So I have my ether layer here. I've got my sodium hydroxide here. 400 microliters is about half a mil, a little less than half a mil. When you're doing extraction, some of these volumes don't have to be exact. So I'm gonna suck up about one mil and squirt half of it out. It's probably good. And I'm gonna add that to my ether layer. The point of this is to remove any unreacted paracresol. It is acidic because it's a phenol and the sodium hydroxide will pull off that acidic proton and make it an ion which will then be soluble in water. So I've capped my vial, I'm going to mix the layers really well again. So this is part of isolation of the product. We're hoping that when we're done with this extraction procedure, the only thing left in the ether will be our pure product. And honestly, from the TLC, I didn't see that much paracresol left in the reaction, but we wanna be sure. So I'm gonna do the same thing I did before. I've got two layers. I'm gonna let them settle a little bit. The top layer again is our organic layer that should contain our product. And the bottom layer is our sodium hydroxide layer. I'm gonna take my aqueous layer from before and I'm going to put it in this Erlenmeyer flask. Erlenmeyer flask is pretty much waste. Oh, that's great, the lights went out on me. Okay, so I'm gonna do the same thing I did before where I'm going to take my aqueous layer, use the pipette, trying to be careful to only suck up the bottom layer. But again, I've sucked up a couple drops of the ether layer, it's not a big deal but I did let some dribble out, so I'm gonna try again. Okay. So I'm gonna pipette this into the Erlenmeyer flask, which is essentially waste, but we're not throwing it away until we're sure. Try not to get any of the ether into the aqueous waste container. Take a good look, make sure I got all the water out. I did not, I have a couple drops still in the bottom, so I'm gonna try to suck those up and only those. All right. The last thing we're gonna do is what's called a water wash. It's just to get any remaining salt impurities out of our organic layer. We only need about 200 microliters of water. So I'm going to suck up a mil and let all but about a fifth of it out. I'm going to add that to my conical vial and do the same thing I did before where I'm going to cap and 
mix the two layers. In a 
bit of a hurry and you don't want to let the column just drip, you can use a pipette bulb or this plastic syringe that I fitted with a piece of tie-on tubing to use a little bit of air to push the methylene chloride through the column. You can see now it's dripping out the bottom. I'm going to push it until the solvent's just above. And then I'm going to add the rest of the solution. I'm going to try to make sure I get every last bit. And then I'm going to push that through the column. pushing until the column becomes pretty much dry. So I'm going to get every last bit of liquid out. I'm going to actually do one more push. should have a colorless liquid remaining in the vial once we rotavap off all of the methylene chloride. So I decided not to rotavap because I had sand bath here and off camera I boiled this down to just the product using the sand bath and the nitrogen just like we did before with the ether and I weighed this flask plus our colorless liquid product, which there is a couple drops in there of it, and the flask plus the purified product weighs 13.0148 grams. 